Hello everybody, my name is Michael and I am a student of the Harvard CS50P course offered online through EDX in 2024 and this is my final project. Here are my credentials and let's begin. I wanted to create an inventory system that used object-oriented programming because I wanted it to be modular. I wanted the user to be able to add materials freely, update them and remove them, and even eventually uh, manipulate data associated with these materials as I implement that and further down the line. But to start with, I have a pretty good uh, structure going uh, where I can actually store, edit, and actually rem remove these materials and display them visually. To run my program, let's go ahead and start and press 1 to open up the system. The inventory storage system will open and we are met with a menu where we have a few options to choose from. Option 1, we can add a new material. Option two, we can remove a material quantity. In option three, we can edit a material property. Options four through six are left blank for additional implementation purposes. Option seven, we can view all the materials in a table format. Option eight, we can actually clear all the materials and start fresh. And in option nine, we will quit the program. Let's go ahead and add a new material. It's important to know that this program describes materials in four ways, a part number, a lot number, a quantity, and a unit. This is often a standard format for labeling materials in an inventory system. Let's give a part number of a basic 001. How about a lot number of just ABC? And a quantity, well we have 100, and how, what do we have? We have 100 liters, let's say. The material is added and updated to our inventory list, and we currently displays all the limit inventories in a table format. We can go ahead and add another material for another example. Let's go ahead and press one again. Let's go 002, this is XYZ. We have, let's say we have 50 of this one, and what do we have? We have grams. As you can see, we have two materials now displayed in our table. We can remove a material quantity specifically to that of the part number 001, the lot number ABC, we need to match the, the units for this material because if the units are different, the quantities would also change. How much of this material would we like to remove? Let's remove half of it and say we want to remove 50. As you can see, both materi materials are displayed, but material 1 in part number 001 in the first row, first row is changed quantity from 100 to 50. We can uh, remove a material quantity entirely by either highlighting the specific amount of that material that we have left or anything that exceeds it. So the units for this material would be this, and let's say we want to remove a thousand liters of it. Even though we don't have a thousand liters, it will automatically detect that it was over the amount that we currently have and remove it all. As you can see, we are only left with part number 002, 50 grams, with a lot number of XYZ. We can edit specific material properties at any time by accessing option 3. What is this part number of the material we like to access? It's 002. We like to access XYZ lot number. And which aspect we would like to edit? We can edit the part number. Let's go ahead and make this, we can make it anything we want. Let's make it apples. As you can see, our new part number is apples, lot number is XYZ, quantity is 50, and units is grams. This is just an example of how modular the inventory system can be as long as things are labeled accordingly and similarly as you add more materials. But you can add something, for example, as apples, and you can have 50 of those, and units would just be a quantity of each or one apple. Uh, you can have any type of inventory you would like. At any time, we can press 7 to view the inventories in our list. It will automatically generate the table and display it to you. We can go ahead and clear all the materials by pressing 8 and all the material it will, we will be reprompted with are you sure we would like to clear all materials just in case 8 was accidentally pressed. We'll press 1, go ahead and all materials have been cleared and just to be checked let's press 7 again to go ahead and double check. As you can see we have no materials to display and now we can go ahead and just quit our inventory system. This has been my project for Python CS50P. I have a lot of fun uh, implementing this and programming it. It's been really challenging, but I have learned a ton from where I started 
and I would like to further implement ways to make subclasses of materials such as, you know, different types of fluids or, um, you know, solids, things of that nature for a lack of better example and give them specific attributes such as data that I can actually manipulate and do various functions with mathematical um, and both chemical. And, and thank you for watching.